intro yet. We have got to turn you the fuck down on your bass drum. I know. Oh <laughs> Holy God. Coolest intro yet, though. That was really fun. <laughs> God bless. That was really fun. I was fun. thinking Nickelback a little bit. I was super thin, Lizzie. I could hear thin Lizzie all day over top of that. Was it thin Lizzie? Is it? I have no idea. Oh my god, I'm, he's a black artist. He's in rock. I'm not sure. Oh my god, everyone know you know who I'm talking about. I'll try to remember. I'll throw up who I, I was thinking of as soon as I can figure it out. But welcome everybody to this show. What we're going to talk about today, we have no idea. Am I even in the frame? I don't know. Other than extreme bass sounds. Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, you mentioned something in the in the car or in the truck. Um, I know you want to talk about theory stuff. I yeah. don't know. Do you I want really, to talk about well, theory, really, though? Yeah, I don't think I'd be able to really help you with that one because I had no... I don't want to just talk theory. on my own. You know about uh, your rudiments. Mm. I mean, you don't need to know theory if you don't have notes to play. You know? Yeah. Tones. It's, it's, it's every tone at once. Just learn free jazz. All right, let's talk about free jazz. If you've never <laughs> heard of free jazz, it is the ultimate form of jazz. And uh, it basically sounds like a bunch of nonsense. The only other time, and I've told him this many times, the only time I've ever in my life ever heard free jazz used in a popular setting setting at all, a popular IP, which is you know intellectual property, is, is uh, dang it, what's his name? The Peanuts. Uh, yeah. The Peanuts... Charlie Brown. Charlie Brown. When Charlie Brown walks through the city, they play free jazz because it's supposed to be like a bustling city of like randomness. That's it. That's the only time I've ever heard free jazz, other than maybe in a jazz, literally in a jazz movie. Yeah, that would be like the only other time that I could think of. But that was a short conversation. Hell yeah! <laughs> bye bye, guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you <laughs> so much. So I want to talk about what kind of clothes specifically you should wear on stage what do you think i know it's a hard one to do so if you're trying to look like a rock star it, it depends on what you really want but yeah. you know i i think people don't understand how important clothes are when it comes to stage presence yeah with the bigger acts whenever you do like four or five outfit changes during a show that's huge acts yeah. though like when you got people that manage your clothes yeah you're and, making money yeah i think at least for our genre i mean a lot of it's the uh maybe like the cut off black jean jacket with like just black pants and all that stuff like at least i don't know there's there's a style i think everyone's trying to mix the country style with the metal style lately currently because that's what they're pushing for only because beyonce pushed for country even cat williams i think as crazy as he is right now Cat Williams even pushed the fact... I don't know if it was Cat Williams exactly. I might be making that up. Someone said recently that it's amazing how much they pushed country this year. More yeah. than anything. Which, by the way, just thinking of country stuff, Morgan Wallen. Morgan Wallen's album that he had to put out for the record company that he's with was just apparently... And I don't listen to country. Apparently, it was bad. Like, people did not like it. Yeah, I mean, you got, what, 30-something songs you got to... You have to put out. Like, you have to put out these songs in and in an album. You have to. doesn't have to be good. And it's Morgan Wallen. If he doesn't want to be with you, at this point in his career, they've... He that, can release anything. He can release whatever he wants. So he released something to get out of a contract. He's like, it's going to be a crap. It's going to be a crap CD. It's going to be crap. Here it is. You wanted it. You want it that bad. Here it is. And it's going to sell. It's going to make the money. No matter what, but apparently it is really bad. It's probably something that he will never ever play. Like if you go to the rights to those songs, I really wonder if he was a part of even half of those songs. I don't know. I, I really don't know. You could probably look it up on Spotify, since it has all the information that Spotify is great because it has all the information the artists want to know. Amazon, I love that. A, not Amazon. Amazon Music. I don't know if Amazon Music does. I really have never used it. You want to know one thing that I wish. I guess there was like a little bit more like popularized. Like, I want to know when this started happening. So, like, if you look back at older songs and stuff like that, uh, you look at the rights, it's always the band name. Like, you go to an album, it'd be like song rights, band name, this record label. And now, these days, there's literally not one single that is like released 
that is just band name. No. It's all their members are individually like written out. Like, I guess they had to figure that out because I assume back then when it was the band that wrote it, it was probably in their contracts that they signed personally. Yeah. And they probably still sign contracts and everything like that. But the difference is, is that if it's just the band making the song, right? And it says the band makes the song. If you kick that person out, he no longer gets royalties and the new yeah. person does. See, and I think that a lot of people like used it to basically save their ass. And that has now transitioned to people being full-time producers just making songs for people because that's all they got to do. Oh, my God. Andrew Bayless. <clears throat> Andrew Bayless. Yeah. Like you just write songs for people. It's like you don't have to perform. You don't have to do anything. And you're always going to have that stream. Always. Coming. Yeah. And it's you own part of it. Yeah. You own a portion of it, which is crazy. I mean, that's awesome that you do get to own a portion of it. It's just that now writing music for people has become more lucrative than it, it must have ever. Yeah. I mean, it has to be at this point because it's like, oh, you, it's no longer the band that owns it. It's you that owns it, that wrote it with the band. And then not only that, they have a performed by tab now. So now it's like, yeah. okay, now we have the, the correct. I feel like they have almost everything covered. They got the producers covered and the producer. They have the artist covered that actually wrote the song and the producers can be part of that. Uh, Tyler Smith. Yeah. He writes a ton of the modern stuff. I Prevail, you know. Falling in Reverse. Falling in Reverse. He, he writes tons of stuff. Uh, but I think it's because he has such a good sound and he probably has really good ways of making things sound amazing. Mm -hmm. um, but now it has a performance by such and such because Jason Richardson wrote that, what's that one song that they got super big off of? Their super insane song, Luke Holland and Jason Richardson, I think it was their first collab. I don't remember. It's the one that has jazz in it, it has country in it, it has the, oh, the big one. Um I'm gonna look it up. I know what it. I think I know what you're talking about. Hose down. Hose down. Yeah. That's it. Jason Richardson has all the rights to that. Yeah. Luke Holland actually doesn't. I think. Well, because I, I think I'm. I'm pretty sure it's this performed by Jason Richardson and Luke Holland. I think uh, Jason Richardson made everything himself. I'm sure he did. As far as mixing, I wonder if he produced it himself. He might have. He's, he's a pretty, gearhead. Yeah, he's pretty good. I've heard he is a gearhead big time. Like he loves gear. But. Yeah, I think the whole issue with that for me personally is it's like you don't know who's actually a good band or not anymore. Because like you're just like you go like think of the things like the bands that had people only write their songs for them. Like if they didn't have that opportunity for that to happen, where would they be if they had to write their own songs? And they'd probably be in trash. If they're I mean, yes, but. Uh, yes and no. I think what happens is, which it, de it depends. You, I mean, we've talked to Paul. Do you remember <clears throat> talking to Paul? Mm, yeah. I think he's like, he might be Indian. Yeah, at Blake's. Yes. Well, he was from Georgia, and then he moved to Nashville. And he said that he wrote uh, like 60 50, songs, yeah. 50, 60 songs for one artist. And the guy picked six songs. Yeah. And of those six songs, he got paid like $500,000. Which is like, oh my God. But yep. it, he also, because he wrote those 60 songs, he also can't use those, what, 44 other songs? Yeah. Let's say 50 songs. 44 other songs. He can't use them for five years. Yeah, that's nuts. And, you know, Chris Stapleton also wrote, he said that, like, they were in, there was an interview with Joe Rogan with him, if you've ever watched it. No. He's in, okay, Chris Stapleton is, like, incredible. He's the only, for me... Only country music artist where I'm like I genuinely respect him because he is damn good. His uh, his voice is awesome and his songs are not extremely typical, right? He has apparently been writing in Nashville for years. I think he lives in he lived in Lexington and he wrote in Nashville for years. Yeah. His first two years, something happened. Uh, he basically they give you two years to try to make a first hit, right? Or they'll just kick you out of it. Yeah. And I don't really know how you go to. Okay, <laughs> I heard some squeaking over there. <laughs> yeah, the pedals. Uh, but he wrote, he said he in his interview, he's written a thousand plus songs himself. And apparently he was very well known amongst all country artists. God, imagine writing that many songs. Like over the career of like my playing, 
I mean, obviously I'm a drummer, so I'm not like writing full songs by myself like some people are. Mm-hmm. But I would be at like 30 songs right now. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I mean, I will admit me and Justin wrote tons of songs. We've written over 100. Yeah. Well over 100. Like we we didn't release at least 50. Uh and uh I can understand how it happens kind of you just get kind of lost in it and you just keep going and keep going and keep going. But that is a ton of music. That is yeah. so much music. But that's just like he that's what a writer does. That's what they better do. That's all they have to do all day long. Yeah. They don't make a lot of money too. They make a lot, very very little. But as soon as they get that one song that hits Good to go. Changes. Uh, who who is the guy you did photos for? Uh, Nico Moon. Nico Moon. Yeah, you did production for him. Yeah, that dude. He is he's doing pretty well right now. I think uh, he is an independent artist too. So he's, he's independent. Yeah. How is he independent? He has no label. I don't think so. No. He might have distribution, but I don't think he has a label. No. Does he have? Who's his manager? I. Uh, don't remember is it in a management i mean he has to have a manager or a manager i'm sure he company. has a manager yeah because like uh he always posts all the time about like uh like oh they said as an independent artist i can't do this and shows people wrong and stuff like that right so he's been posting about being an independent artist he may have been signed uh like previous getting up to where he is but i think he went independent after all that but even going independent he's still getting more streams than ever. He's got 100% of the rights. He's got the masters. He owns it. Yeah. Unless someone copyrights it before he makes it, which would be terrible. Yeah. I would think someone like that at that level would get that done quickly. Done right. It. If he's getting paid pretty well. Oh, my headset just died. Oh. Everything's dead now. I might be out of tune, but I can't tell. I don't know. Do it again. I don't think so. Sorry. That was such a cool video when you did that. <laughs> do, 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 do. you think so? Oh, it was awesome. Sorry, I slowed down and also I gave it a power chord instead of an octave. Perfect perfect fourth power chord. I wouldn't know. Perfect fourth. It's just that's it. Anyways, 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 we gotta start talking about stuff. What do you want to talk about? No, we're talking about distributions and stuff like that. We're talking about Morgan Wallen specifically today. Morgan Wallen, great guy. Maybe I don't really know him. <laughs> Me neither. I got the B side stage on a show. <coughs> I will say, amongst all the artists right now, as far as like uh, amongst the country artists right now, as far as country goes. I think that Hardy is the best. I mean, as far as country goes, <laughs> I think Chris Stapleton is the best. Hardy for me because I can actually country. get in. It's it's the yeah. more of the rock part. Like I just can't do. It's pure like a country. Nickelback country. It's oh yeah, I'd say so. More country, but has the Nickelback flair. Yeah. And it's He's, funny that Nickelback covered one of his songs with him. Oh really? I didn't know that. Seen that. Yeah. And then you got like Kid Rock. He went country. Ugh. He did go country a minute. I mean, he, he evolved. He evolved. He is an older artist now, right? He's, and he's been yeah. dropped by his label. He was with Atlantic Records or maybe Roadrunner. I think Atlantic. 
I know. Pretty sure he was with Atlanta, Atlanta Cracker. And <laughs> Knox got signed to Atlanta Crackers, which I am like, wow. He got signed to one of the biggest levels in the yeah. world. He's co workers with Ed Sheeran. Wow, that's crazy. Yep. If you think, because I mean, they're kind of the same, kind of the same vibe. And uh, they both, I guess, are kind of look the same in a way. <laughs> yeah, they were like, if Ed Sheeran wasn't famous, Knox wouldn't be. Yeah. <laughs> but he, I got to admit, uh, Knox writes great songs. He writes good songs. I'm like, he's got a good team. Do you, I haven't actually seen the, like, Dom is actually on some of his uh, writing stuff. What? Really? Yeah. Like what? Uh, what's, um, I don't want to know. Like, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Wanna, yeah. I don't want to know. I don't Dom has know. rights on that song. What did he do? I'm not sure. But he has rights on that song. That's awesome. That's he's, such a cool song. I think he's got rights on a few of them. The Sneakers song is his biggest song by far. Yeah. But the <laughs> not the 1975 <laughs> is probably getting up there. Oh, it's yeah. Not, 19, not the 1975. Look up Knox. He's great. If you don't know him, you I'm probably curious. do by now. Dude is small. When I met the guy, small guy. He is good, though. I love his music. I do like him a lot. He's at 1.2 million now. That's actually down. He was at like 2 or 3 million. Like, uh, let me find the one. 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 Anyway, yeah, Knox is a super cool guy. Very small. He played with Bill Murray. And uh, he opened for them on a tour. It was incredible. I don't want to know. Dominic Fasora. That's awesome. The guy that I play in Letdown with, the guitarist. You got to ask Dom what he did. Text him. So we get some resolution on this. Just because. Just call him and be like, hey, tell us your story about writing. All right, let's do that. You want to do that? Let's do that. We got an incoming call from Dom. Oh, shit. I'll FaceTime him. Into the mic. He's probably asleep or working out. He's like a fit guy. Dude, he's asleep working out, clearly. Ah. There he is. What's up? So, uh, me, my friend Dylan and I were in the middle of doing a little podcast hey, thing. Good to see you again. <clears throat> We're in the middle of doing a little podcast thing. Oh, sweet. And uh, for some reason, somehow we got to talking about Knox, and I was like, oh, Dom's got uh, some rights on I Don't Want to Know. And oh, yeah. I wanted to hear, like, exactly what you, you did. got to do in there. Yeah, man. So um, I got to help with I Don't Want to Know. I helped with... Um really what I helped a lot with was the second verse Knox and I were both going through a breakup at the time and um, my ex was starting to see someone that looked kind of like an off-brand version of me we were very similar looking but uh, there was just something a little off so the whole second verse is about walking around with your new man looking like me on off-brand not trying to discount the man whatever you find great value in so it's like all just puns based off of him looking like an off-brand me. And that was uh, myself and Zach Smith and Ben Becker thought of all that. That was super sweet. Um, I also got to help a little bit with some of the production and the that post-chorus hook, that bam, 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 bam. That was uh, myself and Cam Becker. So, yeah, we got to help out with that. And, God, I didn't, didn't expect it to get where it got, but... Yeah, I'm super stoked to be a part of that song. That's awesome. It's funny because I, I like heard and found that song before even knowing you, so it was funny to like just look through the rights of stuff one day, and I was just like, okay, that's fucking cool. Whoa, Dom's on this song. <laughs> that's awesome, man. <laughs> what podcast are you guys doing? Uh, we we got one where we just kind of started talking about music, and uh, we're actually in, like we have the whole drum set mic'd up and everything, so. Like, if we want to start... He's, yeah. Yeah. So, like, just pretty much on podcast and, like, talking about shit. 
They got our cameras over there, lights. So we're just talking about random shit musically. And the cool and thing then, is that technically you're our first guest. Yeah, technically <laughs> our first guest. The first person who's not us on here. Let's go. <laughs> I hope I didn't say anything stupid. No, no. <laughs> no, you're good. We wanted to know about Knox. We were really curious about it because we, uh, I met the guy and the dude is, uh, like he just got assigned to Atlantic Record- Records last year. Yeah, dude, he's a brand new artist, and he's like, he got a song on the radio in top forty. He is, um, he's killing. He's on the come up. I, I swear to God, I think he's going to be next Ed Sheeran. Woo! I do too, honestly. I mean, they have to replace him eventually. He's going to get old. <laughs> and the kids on the same label. He's already got the red hair. <laughs> <laughs> dude, he's small. I was surprised at how little the guy was. But he's tall, though, man. Like he's really tall. I think he's taller than I am. That's crazy. Uh, every time I see him, I'm shocked by how tall he is. Um, <laughs> Dude, he is so good. Uh, he is so good at making uh, like Instagram content. Holy crap! Dude, yeah. he's he's a wizard at that. I I admire it. it I don't I don't have the patience for it. I wish I had half of it. Dude, he's just like have to make something. Uh, let's do a cover this time, and then uh, let's do this and this and this. I swear, he, he's a genius. Man, man knows how to work that algorithm real well. <laughs> yeah. All right, bud. Well, I, yeah. we'll let you go. It was great talking to you. We just really wanted to know about Knox. And, Absolutely. I hope I could facilitate some information. Maybe I can get Cam to talk to you guys about him next time because, I mean, Cam's, Cam's the brains behind all that stuff. He does all the production stuff. Oh, yeah? That, but you guys all wrote it. Yeah, 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 yeah. We all wrote that one about a year and a half ago, yeah, maybe almost two bit. years now, before I moved to Nashville. Yeah. Hell yeah, man. Sick. Well... I'll see you in the morning, buddy. <laughs> All right. With context, who is that? <laughs> uh, the guy that I play in Letdown with, the guitarist, Dom. He is, uh, he is a great guitarist. He has guitar and looks. <laughs> and he's a vocalist. And vocals. <laughs> guitar looks vocals. He does know how to play guitar. Hair. He, he is a <clears throat> awesome dude. Love him. Hilarious guy. We shot an Office episode with him. Incredible actor. God, yeah. <laughs> Dude, he was good. I'm not going to lie. Was, yeah, I think he was better than me. I kept getting too nervous. Yeah. But he, he was on it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, Knox is, Knox is killing it right now as far as anyone else. So you got, do you have any updates on anybody? Huh? Anybody that you want to talk to particularly? Anybody that I want to talk to? Yeah, like, sure. Like, if you wanted to – if it wasn't anything that you want to talk about, like, have you seen anything on – music industry lately oh uh not that i can think of on the top of my head like other than the drama other than the drama oh you you know (laughs) you know what drama is happening right now yeah friends apparently making mistakes i'm assuming friends making big mistakes like like career ending mistakes (laughs) yeah i don't know what that's about yet but we're not gonna get into that one <laughs> not at all <clears throat> but no i mean uh tomorrow i mean i got a a technical music video shoot for a letdown i know i'm really wondering who's gonna have his camera operator what does he think is gonna happen i don't know if he plans on doing it like single shots of everyone or i i, I really don't know he just told me to bring my drum set and I was originally supposed to film a visualizer for him, and he was like, okay, yeah, you work the camera. But now he wants me to be in the video, so unless he can get someone else to work the camera, I have no idea what's happening. You just do the Curl Queen thing. Yeah. One really, at a time. Could, yeah. Really, I'm the one who should be hired, but I have to work. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would if I really had the day off, I'd go down there and be like, hey, man, let's, let's shoot this thing. Let's do something that's like, a really great visualizer. Vis- visualizer. Yeah. Visualizer slash music video. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just be like, okay, yeah, we shot this, and it was fun. It's a sick song, though, so I'm excited for it anyway, because Raincoat is a good song, and it's called Raincoat. Uh, for the people that don't know. We played it one time. Uh, you played it? Oh, yeah. did you play it at the... played it in LA, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you played it at the big... Oh, yeah, tell people about that. So there's things that happen that we don't know about because we're fucking plebs. <laughs> and so apparently in the this big, loud rock world where people have money, uh, they just fly us to LA every year to play a show for radio people. Uh, I guess 
all the big loud rock is there like people that fly from nashville go into the show in la and i mean they they put a lot of money into it they fly everyone there they have open bar they have gift bags with things that are legal in that state <laughs> right gift and, bags uh, or mountains yeah but i don't know uh it's i will say i guess playing in letdown is cool based on like i've never had a a job where it's like hey fly here <laughs> we'll pay for it don't worry yeah. about it hey. yeah they literally just pay for your here's your plane ticket go there god and they're just spending <clears> so <throat> much money on you but yeah those but you have those to la shows are pretty awesome to it, me yeah go ahead sorry oh sorry i was gonna say uh those la shows are pretty awesome because we play at a venue that's literally 50 steps away from venice beach like you walk outside the door and you look to the right and you see the beach and it's awesome that is crazy the time that we went oh is it st patrick's day today no uh i don't think so anyway when we went last year we went to la last year and we found a hostel that was 50 bucks a night which Hell is yeah. so cheap to be on Venice Beach. And, of course, there's a lot of people that are really against hostels. I am not. It's actually I'm a very awesome social thing. And uh, it's just, for I think for us, it's more of a, man, 50 bucks a night or 250 bucks a night. Yeah. And I'm just like, no, 50. Like, I don't care if I've got to sit in a room with someone. i got a locker. I can lock my stuff up. I just, I'm trying to yeah, be I outside. Be, I don't plan on being in this room. But. I don't plan on being in this room at all. Like, unless you have a family kind of a thing, and you can rent out an entire room, yeah. know that, which I don't even know how much that would cost. We it would probably cost just as much as a hotel. We did that a few times uh, in Europe with Letdown. You hosteled uh, it? Yeah. We hosteled it, but, like, there would be three or four beds to a room, and it would just be, like, four of us. Like, we would rent out, like, full hostel rooms. Oh, that's awesome. I don't know why. I understand why women are against it. Some yeah. are. A lot of them are. Because they just don't feel like they have privacy. They feel like they're going to get murdered at any point. I don't know why. I do know why people feel like that. But we met plenty of girls that were on, that were at hostels yeah. in New York and in L.A. There's plenty of people. Like, and there are all these people, though, all, the, all of the girls that we met were not from America. Not a single one of them were from America. Yeah, They were all like, Italian. They don't Persian. know what they got themselves into going just to the like, U.S. I guess so. Like apparently, <laughs> hostels are more common. I guess it's more accepted. It's like it's a cheap place to live or for the night. Yeah. You know? So I, I just I think they should be more accepted. Definitely. I mean, there's yeah. crash pads for like people that work. I mean, obviously, your fiance knows that now. Every how like every hostel that we've ever been to has been pretty cool. It's like, been so nice. Like we haven't been to one that's like just trash the one that we went to in la uh that was literally just like one block away from the beach yeah like you exit the hostel take a right and you're you see, at the beach yeah you're next you to venice it. it's beach. awesome yeah you're like right at the santa monica pier and then uh the one that we did in new york it's like they had an upstairs roof area so you're you're like the the east side of manhattan and you just there's train but across the river i believe yeah. that's queens yeah i believe it might be long i think it, is it might be queens. long island i don't know i'm pretty sure i think it i think it is queens but like yeah you just literally go like you get on the train cross over or under the water and you just pop up like you're one street away you walk over to this hostel and like you get your room all that stuff you go up to the roof and you just see everything at the city glowing. Oh, I forgot about that. Yes. That the was local, so cool. What was it? The local 802? What, I think so. The local something. Yeah. It was the local three-digit number. Whatever the three-digit number is for there. But that... Dude, it was so cool. I did not expect it. You could just sleep up there and just be like, it's beautiful. Like, it was so peaceful. It had. It had. It was very nice. People were very nice. The rooms... I mean, it was the most... Was it the most people we had in one room, or was it four? Uh, the one. The one in L.A. was f like <laughs> we, we had, had eight. Yeah, we only we had eight in the one in L.A., which I don't think there was eight people in there at one time. I think there was when we slept. 
And then when uh, I got fucked up, I think there was eight people in there. <laughs> dude, the the one in New York. Whenever we just walked in, and the dude's like showering in the sink or some shit like yeah. that. Yeah. And like he nice. had like two or three massive bags. Like he looked like he was living there. Yeah, he might have been. He's like, hey, another nice guy. In in New York, there's a law where you can't live past like eleven days, otherwise it's a residence. Yeah. So like, oh yeah, there was one guy that we met in New York who was an elevator. He was an elevator mechanic. Do you remember him? Were no. you there for that? I have no idea. No. Okay. So I went a different time. I, th- I went a different time. We went in, got our hostel at the Giorgio Hotel in, I'm a, I believe, Queens. Uh, just look up the Giorgio Hotel in New York and you'll go to where we were. And uh, we, I, I went up there, met, you know, met everybody in the room, kind of just like, hey, what's up? We're here for this. Mm-hmm. And you kind of just be nice. You don't have to talk. Some people are impatient because they're just like, I'm literally just here to sleep. I don't even want to make friends. Yeah. Which is bizarre to me. I feel um, like you're kind of forced into talking to someone there. But you don't have to. I've met I met quite a few people who were literally just not, almost not acknowledge your existence. Yeah. And then it's like, all right, fine. You you don't want to talk. You don't, you just pick, a, pick up on social cues. But I met this guy, uh, nice black dude. His, he'd been living in New York his whole life. And I think he got kicked out. He was an elevator mechanic an elevator mechanic in new york city bank so he's hit, he was living in a hostel not bank he's but he's going up to like you know hundreds of stories and looking down a hole and being like oh my god i have to fix this thing and like scaffold down here terrifying I, shit how would you not be making bank there's elevators because that's dude that's all companies try to do there's a hundred elevators just on one city block right but like say let's say an elevator mechanic is not let's say an elevator mechanic is not really like a it's a skilled trade but it's not a certified trade right Mm -hmm. so there's people can get into it and make a lot of money that can make seventy thousand dollars a year which is a lot of money but it's not a lot of money in new york yeah and if you're not working a lot you know it's it is what it is like you you just can't I don't know if you can survive off seventy thousand dollars unless you have a really small place. Yeah, which even really small places, there's studios that are eighteen hundred dollars. Right. It was very interesting, but there's so <clears> much. <throat> there's so much music in, in that city. We didn't really go see much music stuff. We just no. kind of saw the attractions. Oh yeah, there was a. Here's a completely good one. That's uh, uh, me meeting. So the first time I went to New York City, I went. I was there the entire day going up and down all around. Instead of doing the, the smart thing and like starting from downtown and moving uptown or yeah. uptown moving downtown, I went just fucking everywhere. If I thought of the place, I was going to go there. Yeah. So the first place I wanted to go was like, I wanted to go to the Big Apple. Had to see it. Saw it. Was decent. You know, I was like, whatever. It's not as good as I thought it would be. Yeah. But I'm sure you have to do it at night. Yeah. I didn't do it at night because I was like a little nervous because this was the first time I'd ever flown on a plane. I'm like completely alone on no one's dime and i was in a city on my own completely alone yeah (laughs) and uh loved going and doing it but i took a like i am tired this is many hours in i'm tired i've gone uptown downtown the last thing i want to see not the very last thing the last thing for the day is i want to at least see the statue of liberty so i go take a i take a train as as far south as i can then i take a bus uh, to try to get there. I think you had to take a bus to get there or you could walk. Yeah. You could definitely walk there, try to take a bus, get on a bus. I'm so fucking tired. I've been sitting there for five or ten minutes just sitting. First of all, I didn't pay getting on. <laughs> Not supposed to do that. Didn't pay getting off. The bus driver just didn't care. Yeah. Uh, she. So she was really nice because I thought it was free, mainly because my phone said it was free. It was not free. So I get on the bus been been riding for five ten minutes and then i'm like i feel like i've been going north this whole time oh god (laughs) so i was like hmm i look at my gps and surprisingly i'm going north (laughs) 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 the the whole time and yeah i'm trying to get to trying to get statue of liberty going north the entire time i get off the train get off the bus didn't pay sorry didn't pay uh was a tourists clearly i don't even know if they clearly saw it i mean they might have been like oh this is there's so many tourists this guy, there, this i'm guy sure there's a lot been, of people that don't pay yeah there's this guy might have been a i might have been a local as far as they know but i was clearly tired get off the street uh go to a really old really old part of new york that had not been like rebuilt i'm talking like 
the streets, the sidewalk were two people wide. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, the you know the the actual sidewalk was only like a brick high, and there were bricks lined across it. And like you know how you see the uh, the the cellars. Yeah, like the cellars were open. Some of the one of the cellars was open, and it was like old school New York. This is really old school. It's like you could fucking just fall in this thing, easily fall in it, and it's in more than half of the sidewalk. So you almost have to walk in the street to get out of the way of the cellar. You're walking on top of cellars and everything like that. I look over, and I see a gorgeous handmade guitar. Two of them actually. I was like, what in the hell are these? One of them's acoustic, one of them's electric. I was like, this mm-hmm. is crazy. I go inside the shop, and it's the Crimson Street guitars. And surprisingly, it's on Crimson Street. So I was on Crimson Street. And Crimson Street Guitars has the maker of Kelly Guitars. Never heard of them. Michael Kelly Guitars, I think. The owner, I met the owner and his apprentice. And they had thousands of guitars in this place, all completely handmade. It's like that's all they do all day long is they just make guitars. And the girl who was the apprentice is an amazing artist. So she's not only making guitars, she's making gorgeous art on all these guitars. You know, like that's her job and she's really good at it. Uh, But I go to meet the guy, super nice guy. He even lets me in the back room where they make their guitars. And I just look, I talk to him. I see a platinum record on the ground. He's like, oh yeah, this band, it was in the nineties. I don't know if it was Smashing Pumpkins or, or like, it was someone of that, of like the uh, Sublime Sound. Yeah. God, I can't remember. Sublime Sound and looking down, and he said he traded that for a guitar. So he got someone's platinum record for a guitar. Like, Sick, yeah. yeah. And if it's been, real, yeah. It's real. And it had been sitting there for who knows how long because it was covered in dust. It had been sitting on the ground. It wasn't even hanging up because there's so much stuff on the walls from like woodworking and guitars, and there's just wood everywhere in this place. Uh, and I have pictures of it if you ever want to see me on, on Instagram. I end up finding out that this guy is famously known for making Bob Dylan's guitar. The first time I come to New York, randomly getting off of a bus. That's sick. Randomly getting off of a bus, walking down the street and seeing a guitar in the, in the window. That's weird because I was named after Bob Dylan. Is it a coincidence? I don't know, but I was like, I met the actual guy who made Bob Dylan's guitar. That's funny. I didn't even know you were named after Bob Dylan. You didn't know that? No, I didn't know that. I never thought of that. I was named directly after Bob Dylan and, and uh, Jesse James. Yep, that's, that's definitely uh, something your dad would do. Yeah. Well, my initial name was supposed to be Wolfgang. Yeah. <laughs> so, and he named he wanted to name me after he says it was named after I was supposed to be named after one of the Ninja Turtles. <laughs> he was like we were thinking about making Michelangelo or Raphael or something. The only thing I know about my name situation is apparently I was home for like two weeks without a name. My parents had eight. Well, my parents had like eight to nine months to think of a name. They had so much time. Well, I don't. Maybe after the the gender reveal or whatever. So we'll say they had months. They had months to think of a name, and they had me home for two weeks. And the nurses were calling my mom every single day for that two weeks, asking if they thought of a name yet. And they're like, "Nope, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> nope, not yet. Nope, 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 nope." That's I awesome. think originally I I was very close to being a Justin. Pretty close. Yeah, and then you don't look like Austin. a Justin. You're not doing this. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Other best friend, Justin. <laughs> my other best friend. He's uh he's the only other person I like love playing guitar with. I've played guitar with him for years and uh would love to write with him again. And if you know, once we get our music moving, I would love him for him to play guitar with us. But uh as far as like that New York trip and coincidences, do you have any coincidental coincidental stories like that? Uh I'm sure I do. I I know I've had instances like that where I'm just like, okay, there, there's no way this is not fate. Um, but as again, I was just, if you can never think of any, just let us know, but I'll think I'll try to sit there and think of some, yeah, maybe we'll talk about them like musical coincidences. We could talk about that. Hey, this is a coincidence that happened. Or you could be like tool and make it not a coincidence that they made one of their biggest albums in a, in a house where everyone was killed. Didn't know that. Yeah, it's some famous thing. I'll have to research it. I cannot remember because I've only heard it one time. But I was like, that's weird. There's a door that uh, 
the writer, uh, the guy who is the guy who is Tool. Yeah. Uh, he's the singer. I he he took the door. He took the door out of the place to have like memory of like oh I wrote this entire album here and this is creepy because there's was like a five person murder in here, shit like that. But unfortunately, we're out of time. Please follow us on all of our social medias. Subscribe, please. We absolutely love everything about you all. We're going to jam out with our clams out one last time. All right. I'll give you, I'll give you the stiff. Let's play some more uh, of what we just did. Why did you make it at six? One, two, three, four, five, six. I was in four. <laughs> I was clearly in four. I did feel right only doing four. <laughs> Now I was expecting six! <laughs> I got lost.